Hello and welcome to another segment of Interviews That Matter. I am your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment, we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Today we have such guest, Nassau County District Attorney Kathleen Rice. Kathleen Rice has a successful career as a district attorney for nine years and now she is running for a U.S. Congress. Let's meet Kathleen Rice. Dear, thank you so much for coming here. Thank Appreciate you for having me. Appreciate your time me. this morning. Um, we normally start with the background of uh, our guests. So let's start with you. I know you have been already in the show before, but let's refresh the memory of the viewers. Sure. So I uh, was born and raised right here in Nassau County. Okay. Uh, my parents moved out here from Forest Hills in the 1950s, a long mm. time ago, wow. and raised uh, all 10 of their children. They had 10 kids. I'm the seventh of 10 children. Wow. And they, like a lot of people, focused on education and also the importance of encouraging all of us to do something to give back to the community. Right. So uh, my father always said when I was younger that he knew I was going to go to law school. And in fact, that's what I did. I went to law school and mm -hmm. I intern. I did an internship in the DA's office mm -hmm. uh, back in late 1980s. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. That's how I wanted to advocate for people who didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I worked in Brooklyn as mm -hmm. a prosecutor in Brooklyn for eight mm -hmm. years. And mm -hmm. then I was a federal prosecutor in Philadelphia. Mm. And then in 2005, I moved back home to run for DA and I beat the incumbent, the 30-year incumbent, Dennis Dillon, God yes. rest his soul. Yes. And uh, I became the first woman ever elected DA in Long Island's history Right. in 2005. So we, uh, I, I hit the ground running. We um, modernized the office, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. which was very, very important from a technological standpoint, as you can right. appreciate. Mm -hmm. And we began to address some of the quality of life crime issues that were facing Nassau County residents back mm -hmm. then. So we overhauled our DWI policies. Right. DWI is an epidemic, not just here, but across the country. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we made it harder for drunk drivers to get mm -hmm. a slap on the wrist, because that's mm -hmm. what was happening before. Mm -hmm. So now we have better laws, mm -hmm. uh, more people are being held accountable, and now uh, DAs like me, uh, because we have those better laws, are able to keep the worst of the worst drunk drivers off the road. Mm -hmm. um, we address the issue of violent crime. Mm -hmm. Too many violent criminals were given the opportunity to plead guilty to a non-criminal offense. So right. we uh, mm -hmm. made that more difficult. We uh, trained our prosecutors so that they would know how to be able to go into court and try cases. Mm -hmm. So we didn't plea bargain as many violent crimes out. And now we have more violent criminals going to prison where they belong. Mm -hmm. and um, a higher conviction rate. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we did was we instituted a bunch of, of educational programs in our schools. So mm -hmm. we teach our high school, grammar school, and, and middle school and high school kids about the dangers of drinking and driving mm -hmm. through our Choices and Consequences program. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the dangers of heroin and prescription drugs in our mm -hmm. uh, the Not My Child program. And then we have a program called Stop Then Send, which mm -hmm. educates kids and parents and teachers about the dangers of all of the technological devices that mm. kids have these days, whether it's an mm. iPad, iPod, cell phone, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So those educational programs have been great. We uh, put a, a high emphasis on um, professionalizing the, um, the Special Victims Bureau because that bureau handles cases and crimes against the most vulnerable in our community, our children and our senior citizens. Right. I also put a lot more resources towards our white collar crime areas. We created an economic crime bureau. Mm -hmm. We started a Medicaid fraud bureau. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, convicted more um, corrupt public officials than ever before in this county. Unfortunately, corruption is here in Nassau County as well. And with, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you betray the public trust, you're gonna be mm -hmm. held accountable. So it's been a very busy, Nine years. Nine I was years, right. gratified to get reelected last year by a very big margin, mm -hmm. uh, and it's been my great honor to serve the 1.3 million people of Nassau County as their district attorney. Right. So when you walked in first in the office, and now there's a, so many programs that you have instituted, 
and I'm sure that you got so much good results for the people. Very right. good results, very right. good results. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, th there <coughs> we are very fortunate to live in a county with relatively low crime mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. size of our, popu of our community. Right. Um, and that's because I've always tried to institute very proactive programs. It's right. not enough just to prosecute crimes once they happen. Right. My job is to actually try to prevent crime from happening. So whether it's doing our gun buyback programs right. or our creative prosecutions involving the mm -hmm. Walmart mm -hmm. uh, tragedy mm -hmm. that happened in mm -hmm. Valley Stream or the SAT cheating scandal, mm -hmm. we try to approach uh, mm -hmm. bad situations mm -hmm. and turn them into positives. So for instance, when we had the cheating scandal where kids were paying other kids to take mm -hmm. the SAT and the ACT for them. Those kids were all charged, they were all arrested, which was appropriate because mm -hmm. they broke the law. Mm -hmm. But we also worked with the administrators of both of those college entrance exams right. to ensure that this kind of criminal impersonation could not happen again. And we got them to do it, they paid for it all, the administrators, and now it's uh, there's a level playing field so that honest kids mm -hmm. who play by the rules right. are not taking a back seat to cheaters. We all know how important a college education is. Mm -hmm. It is the mm -hmm. greatest single factor mm -hmm. uh, that can affect the um, effectiveness mm -hmm. of a person going forward in their life in terms of getting a family supporting job. Right. So it was very important that we address that issue and do it comprehensively. And, and now those changes were instituted uh, countrywide. So I'm very proud of, uh, of the initiatives that we've done like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you consider yourself as a toughest trial conviction. Uh, um, rates. Oh yes, yes. Right. So yeah. Well, you know, it, it, that. so the the problem. Every system has to plea bargain. So you right. decide what cases you think are appropriate for plea bargaining. Right. I think that when you're talking about violent crime, right. those are the cases that you have to be prepared to prosecute and try mm -hmm. in front of a jury. Mm -hmm. if you cannot plea bargain those cases. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. one thing that we enjoy here in Nassau County is a relatively low violent crime rate. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. way that you keep that rate low is by sending the message to people that if you, cre if right. you commit a violent crime in Nassau County, you mm -hmm. are going to be convicted and you're gonna go to prison. Mm -hmm. And that has an effect, that has a deterrent effect as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was the challenges like? You know, I'm sure that you know, you, all these program, instituting all these programs, I'm sure you must have faced a lot of challenges across. There were a uh, lot of challenges along the way. Right. Uh, we had, w one of the things that makes any initiative that we do successful right. is that we reach out to the community Right. to have them partner with us. The Terrace Bedell initiative we did in the village mm -hmm. of Hempstead mm -hmm. was meant to root out the most uh, notorious open air drug market mm -hmm. in the county. Mm -hmm. And that was right on uh, in the village of Hempstead on Terrace and Bedell. Now before we did anything, mm -hmm. we reached out to the community and we said, here is what we want to do. We want you to partner with us. Right. Why was that so important? That was important because in the old days, law enforcement just did what they thought was right and they didn't seek advice or help from members of the community. Mm -hmm. No one knows about what it's like to live in individual communities other than the people who live there. Right. So right. we reached yeah. out to them. They partnered with the, us on this initiative. And as a result, we reduced crime in that area by 70% wow. overall, which is amazing. And the reason why it has stayed like that is because we engaged the community and they took a vested interest in the success of that initiative. And that's why we have long-term success. Mm -hmm. That's always my goal. My goal is not just to take care of uh, one situation in the immediate. It's to always look for long-term solutions to crime mm -hmm. problems so that we can mm -hmm. keep crime down in the long haul. Right, and education is the important thing, as you mentioned. Education is so important. Knowledge is power. Right. So whether it is a parent who says, how do I keep my child safe on the internet? Right. And we teach them how to do that. We show them the dangers that mm -hmm. kids can get into, the trouble mm -hmm. that kids can get into, whether it's cyberbullying mm -hmm. or going into chat rooms where they don't mm -hmm. belong mm -hmm. and exposing mm -hmm. themselves to bad people. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And the, we have to, what I try to do is identify a problem mm -hmm. and show everyone what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And then that's step number one. And step number two is once you acknowledge what the problem is, right. you try to come up with a solution. Right, right. And that's right. what we try to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me go back a little bit. You know, who was your mentor? I mean, you must have learned from somebody. And I, I, I know you've been, you know, uh, assistant district attorney in Kings County and all that. 
So that's where you learn your first step right here? Well, my first mentor in life was my mother, who was an amazing woman okay. who raised 10 children. She was an only child, and she had wow. 10 children. Wow. And she did it with such grace and mm. beauty and passion, and she encouraged all of her children. She instilled in us the values that she knew would uh, allow us to be good, productive citizens mm -hmm. and so she was my first role model but along the way in, when I was in law school and of certainly mm -hmm. in both of my jobs mm -hmm. I have had um, a lot of women and men to look up to to help mentor me mm -hmm. um, throughout my career and fortunately when I became DA in 2005 I was able to bring mm -hmm. a lot of those people to come work here in Nassau County wow. okay. and which was so wonderful to me mm -hmm. it gave me such a, a great comfort and confidence mm -hmm. and support to have the people who taught me mm. to come and teach all of the new assistants in the office. So mm. um, there are so many, I've been very fortunate to be exposed to a lot of really wonderful people that have uh, enabled me to be as effective as I've been as DA. Good, good, yeah. Now, uh, as a woman, obviously, right, with, is there a challenges that you face as a woman in, you know, male dominant society? There are challenges as a right. woman in my position. Right. Now keep in mind, I was the first woman ever exactly. to serve as DA, and right. that was in 2005. That right. was only nine years ago now. Right. Right. So I have been in a profession that has been populated uh, predominantly by men. Right. When you think of cops and cop shows, or you think of prosecutor shows, mm -hmm. in the old days it was all men. Right. So when I became a prosecutor in 1992, uh, I was certainly one of a group of women, but we were very much outnumbered. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that in my office now, we have more women prosecutors than we have men. Ah. So I think that we have been able to kind of do away with that, that perception that this field of being a prosecutor is only a man's world. I think that we've kind of gotten past that. Um, but I think that it was it was definitely challenging in the beginning, mm -hmm. not only because I was a woman, but I was a very young woman. I was 40 years old when mm -hmm. I was elected. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't think people were used to having a woman in that position, but also a young woman. Right. Um, so I was uh, very grateful for the uh, experience that I had mm -hmm. that enabled me to be as effective as I was and to be able to face those challenges. Mm -hmm. But I, I never look at things through gender colored glasses. Right. Um, my parents raised four boys and six girls and we were all raised the same way with no distinction for gender. Mm -hmm. And I think that little by little society is catching on to that. So you still, uh, you still think it's little by little society is catching. Not I think like, so. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, look. You know, we, yeah. we if you look at any profession, right. whether it's medicine or law, yeah, right. or being a CEO mm -hmm. or right. uh, the dean of a mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. major, in, you know, uh, educational institution, women are still not fifty percent of those roles. So right. we still have a way to go. But little by little, for every person like me who is able to shatter uh, a ceiling where women have never gone before mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. DA here then I'm showing all the young women and young men right. who are coming up that whatever your dream is, you can, you can make it a possibility. Right. If, if you work hard and you have passion and drive and you, uh, you know, have your goals set and you work towards them. Yeah, so like, you know, you are considered as toughest DA. Yeah, I think I have a reputation for being tough. And, and being a woman. And tough. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, I, I've always been this way, so I don't know. <laughs> people are used to it. Uh, I think that most people want their DA to be tough, right. but also to be right. compassionate and right. understand that there is a, a unique way to look at things, especially when you're dealing with crime issues. Um, but yeah, I, I think that most people are uh, accept the fact that a woman can be tough. Um, regardless of the fact that she's a woman. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. So what will you consider your major accomplishment as a DA? Like, I mean, you, you have considered many programs, like, you know, and the results, obviously, you know, you have to see the results and whether they're successful or not. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you consider? Number one, we have a truly merit-based office. When I came in, uh -huh. women were making 30% less than men. Oh. having the same level of education and experience. Okay. The reason for that was because there had never been a woman in the high up positions as executives mm -hmm. or as DA. Right. So now we have nine years into this job, we have done away with that pay differential mm -hmm. and it's a purely merit-based office. If you work hard, whether you're a man or a woman, you can move ahead in the office. So I'm mm -hmm. very, very proud of that. There has to be that kind of 
merit-based office if it's going to be effective. Mm -hmm. Number two, the training mm -hmm. that the prosecutors in the office mm -hmm. get is second to none. Okay. And that's incredibly important because from an ethical standpoint right. and a trial standpoint, you want your young attorneys who are going into court and representing everyone here in Nassau County to be as well prepared and as ethical as possible. And I believe that we have that. Mm -hmm. Number three, I believe that I have kind of changed the conversation when it comes to how law enforcement can be effective at fighting crime. So yes, we deal with the kind of reactive crimes. If someone gets arrested, they then the, the case comes to us and then we prosecute it. And we've been very good on that aspect of it. But the other aspect that I try, have tried to develop right. and I think I've done it successfully mm -hmm. is to teach people that we try to be more proactive. So all of the pr educational programs that I talked about, the creative initiatives that we've done mm -hmm. in the village of Hempstead with the gun buybacks, with the Walmart case, and with the uh, school cheating case, mm -hmm. I think that most people will say that uh, I have really professionalized the office and really brought it into the 21st century and changed the way that people look at the role of a DA in the community. Very good, very good. Yeah, I think, you know, and let's talk about the public corruption. Like, you know, you also have a uh, prosecuted some of the public corruption cases. Uh, corruption is always there. How does it come up to your office? Basically? We get cases either through someone getting arrested okay. or we get a tip. Someone mm -hmm. comes into calls or comes into our office mm -hmm. and tells us about something that's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's how we build these cases. Okay. Uh, the, the, th the reason why I put such a high premium on these mm -hmm. cases mm -hmm. is because if a, a democracy like ours is going to be successful, mm -hmm. anyone who is elected mm -hmm. to um, serve the public needs to do so with complete integrity. Because right. when a public official betrays the public trust, nothing eats away at the heart of a democracy more than that. Right. And the public has a right to expect <coughs> that the people they elect mm -hmm. are going to mm -hmm. serve them, mm -hmm. not themselves mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. someone else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so whether it's throughout this state or across the country, this is not something that only goes on here. Unfortunately, we see instances of public corruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. Because I don't allow my office to be political, I don't allow anyone in the office to do any political activity or make contributions or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I, my office has the level of credibility and integrity it takes to make mm -hmm. these kind of cases mm -hmm. because I don't run a political mm -hmm. office. So yeah. if you're a Democrat or a Republican, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. or an independent. If you're breaking the law, you're gonna be held accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think that for the first time here in this county, right. people believe that those laws are being enforced and they're being enforced mm -hmm. in a way that sends the message that if you're going to betray the public trust, you're going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you about the internet. Like, you know, everybody is used to internet now. The kids are using all the time. They are there. Uh, does in, is internet does good as well as bad? Now, your office obviously knows what is bad side of it. And we, as a general people, don't know what is bad side of it. Just tell us something about that, you know, because that's what I think our viewers will be more interested in also. When I was first elected, right. this was the number one growing crime was internet crime. Okay. So when you think back, I, it was really, I'm trying to think of the first time I got a cell phone. I think it was mm. in the 1990s, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this kind of technology is new, right. but it's very quickly developing. Mm -hmm. I think all of the technological advances we have made mm -hmm. are fabulous. I think it connects us with people far away. Right. It allows us to do business more efficiently. There's a lot of good that our technological development, the internet and mm -hmm. everything like that offers us as a society. Mm -hmm. But that comes with a lot of bad. Right. Now you see more people committing crimes over the internet. Mm -hmm. So we constantly try to have to educate, especially seniors mm -hmm. who are particularly vulnerable mm -hmm. about how to keep themselves safe on the internet. It's perfectly fine to shop over the internet and do things like that, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful in mm -hmm. keeping your private information private. Um, and especially now with young kids. When mm -hmm. I was growing up, mm -hmm. we didn't have cell phones. I, I go right. into schools and I say to kids, guess what, I, I ask them to show me, how many of you have cell phones? Every mm -hmm. hand goes Every up. Has, right. And I say to them, guess what? When I was growing up, there was one phone in the house <laughs> and it was attached to the wall right. and you could only walk a certain distance away from it. Right. So, and, and the kids look at me and scratch their heads and <laughs> as if I just landed from a foreign planet. Mm. So these kids these days are growing up with these electronic devices right. attached to their hip. Right. And we have to make sure as parents 
-hmm. as guardians, as adults in children's lives, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we give them the tools to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And that's what our mm -hmm. program, Stop Then Send, is all about. So mm -hmm. I think technology is great, we embrace it, but the number one uh, growing crime is internet crime. So we right. have to make sure that mm -hmm. we embrace mm -hmm. everything that's good about it mm -hmm. and protect ourselves from the potential dangers. Can you give an example of internet crime? Like, you know, what could, let's say, for example, my daughter, she's going on internet all the time, right? Yes. What could be dangerous for her not to do? So th there is a, one of these scams where you'll get an email right. purportedly from a loved one okay. saying, I'm stuck somewhere and right. I need you to wire me money. Right. And people say, oh my gosh, I've got to wire you money. Right. Right. And then they wire the money and it's gone. Okay. So these are the kind of things okay. you always just have to, you know, as they say, trust but verify. Right. Right? Okay. Everything, you know, there are other scams that you get. Now, the, a lot of this can be over the phone, too, or through the mail. Right. You know, there's a bank account mm -hmm. wait, with your name on it that has mm -hmm. $10,000 in it. Just send mm -hmm. me your personal information, and I'll write you a check. Mm -hmm. So there are all these kind of, they're very creative. They're mm -hmm. smart people. Mm -hmm. They're using their brains for the wrong reason. Right. But you just have to, If I always say, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It's not. <laughs> and you should stay away from it. Exactly right, yeah. So that is why, you know, even if somebody sends me an email or anything, the open a uh, link, I never open Absolute, it. Unless they tell me one. that I've sent you something. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I had that happen to me recently right. where um, I was supposed to open this up and I, I said, you know what, this looks a little strange. Right. So I called my friend who sent it to me and I said, yeah. did you send me right. this email? And he said, no, don't open it. There Everyone's telling me there that. You so you just have to, as I said, trust but verify. <clears throat> right, yeah. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Interviews That Matter. I'm your host, Raj Mehta. We are having a conversation with Nassau County District Attorney Kathleen Rice, who is also running for election this year in November 2014 for Congress. That's right. So I want to congratulate you for uh, uh, first uh, for winning the primary. Thank you. Okay, and uh, now you are the Democratic candidate for the congressional seat. Um, obviously, no. Whatever you did on a district attorney's office and a Congress, now you're going to represent the Nassau County 1.3 million people, uh, well, a district actually, to the United States government. Yeah. Tell us something about that. What do you? Why do you want to do this? Well, I first want to say how uh, happy I am that I to have the support of Carolyn McCarthy. This congressional district, which is my congressional district, right. has been so well served by Congresswoman McCarthy over the past 18 years. Mm -hmm. She has been such a strong advocate for individuals, for families, for communities. So mm -hmm. I'm very, very proud mm -hmm. to have her support. But I made this decision for one reason. Okay. People think that Washington is broken. Mm -hmm. If you talk to people, they'll say, I, I don't like Congress. They don't get anything done. They just go there, they live in a bubble and no one cares about their constituents anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's partisan gridlock at historic highs, and we need to break through that if things are gonna change. And that's why I decided to run. If I've developed a reputation for anything, it is for having a level of political independence mm -hmm. that we need in Washington right now. Mm -hmm. I have got, been very successful as DA, not only by partnering with the community, but also partnering with my other colleagues in government. Mm -hmm whether they be Democrats or Republicans. Mm -hmm. I work very closely with both because that's how mm -hmm. you get things done. Mm -hmm. And if I'm lucky enough to be elected, that's what I'm gonna do for the constituents of the 4th Congressional District because that's what we need. Mm -hmm. We need to get government back on the side of the people mm -hmm. and not on the side of the elected and the mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. What will be your priority? There are many priorities, and I think that when I when I tell you what the, what I want to focus on, right. I think you're going to say yes. You know, when I talk to people in the community, mm -hmm. they talk about this oh. problem. They worry about the fact mm -hmm. that we have no comprehensive immigration reform mm -hmm. in this country, right. and that is a purely federal issue. Mm -hmm. I see the effects mm -hmm. of having n not having a policy mm -hmm. and a comprehensive immigration policy on the local level. Mm -hmm. I think we mm -hmm. need to uh, work at getting a policy, hopefully we're close to that, but mm -hmm. we need to embrace everything that has made this country so richly diverse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. do it in a way that keeps our borders safe and decreases likelihood of illegal immigration, mm -hmm. right? I think mm -hmm. everyone agrees with that. That's a right. pretty common sense approach. Right. We have to get the college student loan problem mm -hmm. under control. What mm -hmm. we are doing to the next mm -hmm. generation 
of Americans mm -hmm. is we are saddling them with mortgage-sized student loans. Mm -hmm. They can never get out from under. Mm -hmm. So well, how does that affect the economy? How does mm -hmm. that affect our communities? Right. When kids are graduating from college, they're moving home with their parents because that's all right. they can afford to right. do. Right. So they're not buying a car, mm -hmm. they're not buying an apartment or a house, they're not getting married. Mm -hmm. They're putting off all of these developmental things that mm -hmm. people do in their life because they can't afford to do anything other than pay for their student loans. Right. We need to get that problem under control. Mm -hmm. We need to mm -hmm. deal, uh, mm -hmm. we have to figure out a way to support small mm -hmm. businesses, mm -hmm. especially in this congressional district. Small mm -hmm. businesses are the backbone right. to successful communities right. and families. And so mm -hmm. we need to figure out a way to encourage people not mm -hmm. only to start mm -hmm. businesses, mm -hmm. but not to over-regulate them to the extent mm -hmm. that they can't be successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's critically important. Mm -hmm. The other thing that needs to be done in this congressional district is what Carolyn McCarthy has been working on for almost the last two years, and that mm -hmm. is recovering from Superstorm Sandy. Mm -hmm. There isn't a congressional district in the state that was harder hit by Superstorm Sandy than this one. Right. People are still not in their homes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have to address that issue, make sure that people get mm -hmm. the money to rebuild, mm -hmm. and that when we rebuild, mm -hmm. we do it in a way that makes gives us a stronger infrastructure so that when the, ne not if, but when the next storm comes, we're better prepared. Right, 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 yeah. So now let's talk about the immigration reform. Like we are right now, the issue is that a lot of children are coming from Central America, and Americans are passionate people. Like we really, uh, you know, we welcome everybody. But do you think this, like if you allow like this, right? I mean, a lot of people will come here. Yes. Is that good or bad? Not in, Under these circumstances, that is not good. You're talking about young children and they may be right. fleeing very difficult situations, right. but they're coming here and some of them have family here, but most of them don't. And mm. so this is a problem that obviously the, the government is working on now. Right. Um, but uh, we, have to, we, we have to set a policy mm -hmm. that doesn't allow for this kind of influx of people. Mm -hmm. uh, especially children. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, look, we need to have comprehensive immigration reform policies so mm -hmm. that we can cut down on incidents like this from happening. Mm -hmm. But these are like, you know, just walks in, right? I mean, they are not coming through a proper immigration no, they're law. Not com no, not at all. But you know, obviously these people feel right. desperate about right. making sure that their children right. can, can grow up in a, in a safe environment. And of mm -hmm. course we want mm -hmm. all children, mm -hmm. regardless of where they are right. from, to be able right. to have that security. Um, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that once we are able to mm -hmm. institute some kind of immigration reform, I think instances like this will become fewer you know, and far between. Uh, what about the health care? Is the new health care law, do you think it's successful, like Obama Obamacare? That's what they call the it. Affordable Care Act Affordable care is Act. something that, you know, my, my unfortunately there are still, still people out there who are talking about repeal, repeal, repeal. Right. Uh, I think most people think that that is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. If there are, are parts that are broken, we need to fix them. Right. But you can't deny the benefits mm -hmm. of the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. I just spoke about all these kids who are graduating from college, 22, mm -hmm. 23, they can't find a job, they're moving home with mom and dad. Under the Affordable Care Act, they can stay on mom and dad's health care until mm -hmm. they're 26. Major benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a pre-existing condition, if you were right. diagnosed with a disease that you have overcome, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that that is not going to be a uh, a reason why you're going to be denied coverage in the future. Right. So allowing for coverage with pre-existing conditions and not allowing any penalty for that, that is a major, major benefit. So there are very good parts of the Affordable Care Act and the ones that are not so good we just need to fix. Right. See, right now the Congress is, uh, I mean, Republican majority. And, uh, you know, in order to do anything, you need some support from right. the other side. Right. And uh, you mentioned that you're going to, you, you are good at getting support all across. Is that what you're planning to do, if it is? If, if I'm uh, fortunate enough to get elected, there's no question that I am going right. to take the same style that I have been successful at here right. as DA mm -hmm. to Washington. That's what people mm -hmm. want. They want right. problem solvers. Mm -hmm. They don't want partisan mm -hmm. politicians. Right. Right. They want politically independent mm -hmm. people who make the decisions based on what's mm -hmm. best for their constituents, right. not them. And I mm -hmm. do believe that there mm -hmm. are good-minded people in Washington. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that the more we can send people like me there, who can reach across the aisle and promote compromise, I think that we'll get this country back on the right track. Good, good, yeah, that's what we want to hear, actually. Yeah. 
you know now let's talk about our community i mean you know in uh, we our indian american community we are from and what do you i mean you must have met a lot of people from our community oh sure and uh, what is your what are your thoughts about the contribution of our community to the nassau county your community is an incredibly important part of the diversity of this great county of ours mm -hmm. we have 1.3 million people in this county one of the most diverse counties in the country mm -hmm. right. and that's why people want to come here mm -hmm. because we welcome everyone right. and every single community mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. a contribution mm -hmm. that is valuable mm -hmm. uh, so I am very grateful for the friendship that I have mm -hmm. um, with you certainly and you mm -hmm. always asking me to come on the show so I can address concerns that mm -hmm. you might have or members mm -hmm. of your community might have so that mm -hmm. they understand that regardless of where you live in this county or what your background is mm -hmm. that you have a DA that cares about every single community mm -hmm. good good and you have uh, I'm sure you have a lot of I mean in uh, intern positions in your office oh, absolutely. and all that yes and there are Yes, and what we try to do, and that's the other uh, thing that I should have listed as one of the successes, the DA's office is now more diverse than it has ever been. Why mm -hmm. is that important? Mm -hmm. Because people in this community deserve to see, mm -hmm. uh, I think this office has to reflect the community it serves, mm -hmm. the rich diversity that we have here. Right. So I'm always looking for um, ways to increase the diversity, getting kids, mm -hmm. letting kids know about internships that we have, not just mm -hmm. for law school kids, but for high school kids and college kids as well, mm. so mm. that they can get an introduction to what it's like to be a prosecutor right. and maybe get the law bug and, and go to law right. school. Right, right. So how is the campaign going so far? The campaign is going very well. We just uh, finished the primary back on June 24th. I can't believe it's already August. The summer is almost, <laughs> almost coming to almost an almost end. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking forward to September and October. I think that mm -hmm. when September rolls around, people are going to start focusing mm -hmm. on the fact that this is an election year. It right. might not be a presidential election year, right. but it is an election year nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're electing and re-electing important positions like governor, right. attorney general, comptroller, mm -hmm. and we have a, a congressional races going on. So mm -hmm. I, I would just ask you, and hopefully through this show, we will we will be able to remind people that mm -hmm. November 4th is election day, and regardless of who you vote for, of course I'd love people to vote for me, but regardless of who you vote for, mm -hmm. just go out and vote. Make your voice heard, because if you don't go into the booth and place your vote, you can't complain about exactly. the people who get elected. Exactly right, yeah. So what is your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is getting people out to vote. Okay. That really is. If you look mm -hmm. at where mm -hmm. America falls in terms of right. voter turnout, right. it's, it's really discouragingly low. Mm -hmm. And there are mm -hmm. reasons for that that mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. People feel like government is broken, not just right. local, uh, you know, here right. at the state level, but in Washington. Mm -hmm. So you, I don't blame people for that. Mm -hmm. But the only mm -hmm. way that we're going to make it better is for voters to engage and yeah. to use the power that they have right. and allow their voice to be heard. The right. only way you're going to change things in Washington is to change how we send people to Washington. Of course. And we can't do it by default. Right. We can't send people to Washington because no one came out and voted. So mm -hmm. whoever got mm -hmm. the, you know, mm -hmm. the votes, you don't even know who it is, mm -hmm. then they go. You want to make a positive choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that people, once you know, the summer is over and September rolls around, mm -hmm. that they pay attention and learn as much as they can about the candidates, me included. People know a lot about what I've done mm -hmm. as DA, so I'm right. very fortunate about that. Right. But I want them to know even more about what I want to do if I'm lucky enough to go to Washington. Right. So yeah, that's right. going to be the biggest challenge, Raj. It's, oh. it's going to be voter turnout. Now the governor's election is there, controller's election is there, uh, I, you know, and they're both Democrats. Uh, would that help you? I, I, I guess you could say that that would be helpful if, you know, they're going to be, have a presence here and encourage right. voters here to come out and vote. Mm -hmm. That would hopefully um, help me. Anything that brings voters out is, that I, I, my, I feel confident enough that if we can get voters out, right. that, um, that I will get the support mm -hmm. that I need to win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we wish you lots of luck. Thank you and, very uh, much. Appreciate you coming out here. If you have your final message, I uh, would like to hear that. Well, my final message would be vote. Make sure that you vote. This year, you can start to turn around how our government serves you right. by going out and voting, telling everyone in your family, your colleagues, your friends, everyone in your community how important it is to vote. One of the things that makes our country so great is mm -hmm. the fact that we have that ability to vote right. once you turn 18. So right. we need to encourage people to do their civic duty mm -hmm. and 
you know what, before you know it, things mm -hmm. are going to start changing. Yep, yep. And if you are not registered, you know, go, go on register. the Board of Elections. Yes, go board register. Of elections. Still have time. Absolutely you have time. Right. Absolutely. Right. Never you too know, late. Never too late. And you don't have to register for any parties or anything like that. You Just can register. Still yep. Register and go out and vote. Yes, in a general election, you can anyone can vote. The primaries mm -hmm. are different, but right. in the general election, general you can election vote. Any, right, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, comments, you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com. That's again rajmitv at gmail.com. You can also watch our prior shows on YouTube at youtube.com slash Infosys International. That's again youtube.com slash Infosys International. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Raj.